Hey guys, this is just a quick video showing you how we set up our camera for unboxing videos. We start off with getting the camera bag out. In the camera bag, we have a whole assortment slash arrangement of items, including monitor, camera, lenses, so on and so forth. So we're gonna start off with the Sony a7 IV hybrid shooting camera. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get out my 50, sorry, 35 millimeter F1.4 G Master lens. We're gonna go ahead and take off the lens caps on both ends. You want to make sure that you don't drop anything, of course. And then you have your camera already set up pretty much. Take your lens caps and set them off to the side somewhere where you're going to remember them for sure. And then we get to the Ninja 5 monitor and I'm going to be using a three point access. I believe it's a three point uh, horseshoe mount that I'm just going to go ahead and put to the middle here. I'm going to be leaving this in kind of a portrait mode setup because that's how we typically shoot our reels. In order to do that, I want to be able to turn it up and down. So I've arranged it to be able to turn its axis on this degree. Then I'm basically just going to hook it up and just like that. Then of course I do want to be using a battery with this. I'm going to go ahead and attach that a little bit later, but now we have to get to the HDMI cables. In which case I am actually going to be using Ninja's dedicated coiled HDMI cable. This is probably one of the better ones out there from what I've read online. So, you know, it's better to just stick with what's generally consistent with what you've read online. You don't want to be taking chances when it comes to your footage not being reliably there when you're recording onto an SSD. So this is already hooked up. Of course, this is not usable at the moment. We still need to attach the battery and the SSD, but I want to go ahead and set everything up. I have right here is essentially a two point tripod. I can't remember the exact name, but I'm going to essentially hook this up so I can shoot it again in a portrait mode, nine by 16 format. And I'm gonna hook it up like so. A lot of my movements may be scaring a lot of people out there because I'm not exactly 100% careful with my camera equipment. I am as careful as I can be, however. And I rotate this just so it's actually facing me while I'm shooting. I'm not necessarily too concerned with how the cable is contorting. I just want it to be relatively stable more than anything. And I want my camera to be stable and my camera is stable, thankfully. Not entirely sure if everything was caught on camera earlier, but basically right here, I have my Ninja 5 tilted towards me. So that way I'm able to see while I'm shooting these unboxing videos. And on top of that, I have the Atomos basic caddy drive that comes with your Ninja 5. Included, I have a pretty decent sound some one terabyte SSD that is gonna basically capture all of my footage really, really well. So you connect it at the bottom here, you make sure that your SATA connection aligns perfectly. And now you wanna make sure that you get your battery in. So I have a battery fully charged here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna connect that to the opposite end here. One thing that you wanna make sure about when you're using these two point tripods where you're able to basically turn one of these sections on another axis, you have an off balanced weight on the opposite end of the tripod. Typically these two point axis tripods come with a pretty heavy duty bag that they're easy enough to use. Uh, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. You just have to be able to find a weight lying around in your house somewhere. Right now what I'm doing is I'm just turning on my Animos Ninja 5. It's not exactly aligned how I'd like it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and contort that. So it's at least a little bit more in my direction as I'm filming. Now this coiled wire is pretty much out of the way. I won't be having to worry about that all too much. Now I'm gonna open up my Sony a7 IV and just get it set up. I'm gonna take off the lens cap. And now one of the biggest issues when you're using a lens cap is that you're not gonna remember where you left it. I always just put it in my left back pocket because that's one of the easiest ways to remember that I still have it on me. Now right here, I have a Sennheiser MKE 600 microphone, shotgun microphone that I have with an extension audio analog cable at the very end of it. And it's XLR uh, cable that you attach to the end of this microphone, obviously, of the shotgun microphone. You're gonna turn it on, it's powered by a AA battery. What you're gonna do, obviously, is that you're gonna take this audio analog cable and attach it to the input on your camera. If you do have an analog input on your Sony camera or whichever camera brand that you're using, obviously. I still have this bag in the way, so I'm gonna take that out of the way. I have the Sennheiser pretty much propped up. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this box put it like so on my uh, nice background slash foreground that I'm having set up for my camera here. Eventually I'm gonna adjust the lighting orientation so that it fits the subject a touch better. But right now I'm just adjusting this tile so you guys can see a little bit behind the magic and cleaning it up a touch bit because not everybody likes to see dust in their videos even though there's still gonna be a lot of dust. Then what we could do is that we either use another two point lighting system or typically what I do is I put our small rig softbox at the strongest setting and I get this light here set up. This is a bicolor Godot tube light and I have it on either warm or cold color and I'm gonna turn it on. It's gonna blind you immediately or not because it's on the opposite end. It's kind of wonky the way that you set this up. Typically you're gonna wanna pull it out. The way that, yeah, there you go. That's basic demonstration of that. 
you're gonna wanna invert it away from your eyes so that you do not blind yourself in the process of performing this. And you adjust it exactly like that. So now we have this light set up and I have a nice accent light to exaggerate or not. This tube light is basically just gonna give me the ability to provide a little bit of an accent to the overall image in post, so on and so forth. And then we have our soft box here that is gonna provide the majority of the light at about 100%. So I'm gonna bring that a little bit closer and angle it a little bit more downwards so we could get that light as much on our subject as possible. So there's a couple things that we do before we actually start shooting. So we have the Godot light right there that I'm gonna be unboxing. We have our soft box here. We have the Ninja 5 portable monitor. Obviously the flip out screen is not necessarily Necessarily being used, but I do use it for monitoring purposes when it comes to showing whether or not I'm exposed or not. It's not really the best uh, measurement all the time necessarily because I am at about an f1.4 at 800 ISO. So that is pretty low, even though I opened up the lens quite a bit in terms of the aperture, but this is going to be relatively decent. We could take a look at our image if it actually does expose properly. I can show you right here that it looks pretty relatively decent. I typically like to bring the white balance quite low when it comes to adjusting most things. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm actually gonna adjust that in the settings, open up. So I'm at about 4,000 Kelvin right now. So I could take that up a touch bit more by going over here and I'll probably put it at about 4,400 Kelvin because that is a little bit warmer. It's not necessarily, you know, the warmest photo ever, at least relatively white balanced. And you can see right here, the photo looks white. So that looks good. And then in post later on, if I want to turn it a little bit more blue, warm, whatever tone I'm looking for, I could get it there. And there is pretty much our final frame. And then of course, what comes later on is post-production, but we can handle everything from A to Z for you guys at a pretty reasonable price. So go ahead and reach out to us if you are, of course, interested.